Mayor Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. Residents may apply for up to $25,000 to help cover 2019, 2020, and 2021 tax years. Previous year's taxes must be paid in full or in a payment agreement with the treasurer's office. Eligible homeowners must have a qualified financial hardship that occurred on or after January 21st, 2020. You must currently own and occupy your home as your primary residence and must have owned it since January 21st, 2020. To see if you qualify, please visit waynemetro.org, call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're five minutes in, uh, five minutes of muting. All right. What the fuck? Can you guys again. hear us? Would you right. just respond and see if you can hear us? Yeah. Yeah. He says, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay, us. Us. okay. Okay. Okay, Vanessa. Good morning, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Let's start from the beginning. We'll have to we apologize for the. Uh, no, I'm not yeah. apologizing. Yeah. All right. Okay, we can hear you. Well, Vanessa Moss, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Alan Langer. Good, good, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Alan. Well, let's good go. Good morning. Sir. Welcome back, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. back. Happy to be back. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, let's get straight to the point. Uh, we're here at Next Change uh, in Court Town. Thank you, Bob Roberts. And uh, let's go with the outrage of the week, uh, Vanessa. So uh, my outrage of the week is probably going to be my outrage for the year is I, I personally think it is criminal that we live in the greatest country in the land. I think it's criminal to have people that don't have homes. I think homelessness is criminal. I think poverty is criminal. And the fact that we don't have universal health care and we do not have a robust mental health system, is criminal. Why do I say this? Is I shared this story with you. I had an encounter with someone, and everybody knows what I do for a living. I had a comp encounter with a, a lady, and um, she was charged with um, assaulting an officer. They had um, arrested her, and they had her hold in cell, basically. And they decided that because she has mental illness that they were going to inject her with medication. That's a problem. It's a problem because you didn't have a court order to do that. So of course, we're going to hold a preliminary examination. The officer in charge, I guess, saw the error of their ways and they decided that they weren't going to proceed. Okay, so we did a dismissal. I was in tears because this is what I encountered. A woman who's homeless, who slept on a bench the night before. The night before was when we had that heavy rain. She comes into the building. She is soaking wet. She's talking and she's chattering. Her teeth are chattering. She had nowhere to go. But she had enough presence of mind to come to court to handle her business. Someone had allowed her to stay at their place. They're using her EBT card. And when the money ran out on the EBT card, they kicked her out. They kicked her out. So she had to sleep outside all night, but came to court anyway. She had nothing. Nothing. We live in the United States of America, and this is what we have. And you know what I thought to myself? Not only was I touched, I, I, and you know, I, I took the people mover over. Everybody knows I live downtown. Now I took the people mover over and walk. And I'm thinking in my head, I, I gave her what I had in my, my bag. And um, I tell her, her her blankets are wet, her bags are wet, everything is wet. A couple of the officers took money out their pocket to give it to her, but I'm standing there thinking, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? Can't put her in my vehicle because I don't have my vehicle. 
gave her some money and said, hey, go to a laundromat, put your things in there so that you can give them dry, you know, wash them, and get it dry, get something to wear. Then by the time I got home, I realized I should have put on a people mover with me and I should have gone up to the Salvation Army to get her some dry clothes. But I'm outraged that we have, we live in this country and this happens and this is the problem. I think that when we're in district court, that that's the first level, that's before you go to circuit court. Why don't we have social workers? Why don't we have people for housing there? Why don't we have mental health? We don't have a mental health. The mental health system that we have here is a revolving door. They put them in the hospital for a few days and yeah. you get out and you depend on these people to go and get outpatient treatment. And that is very unrealistic. So am I outraged? Yes. And I, I was brought to tears, okay, and that's days ago. But, you know, today, this morning, yesterday, I'm thinking about that woman and, and all the other people that are like her. And you That's can, my outrage. Well, you can walk down the street and you can see the folks. Uh, but you can thank John Engler and his his group for closing all. They, clo no, they closed all the hospitals. They closed all the clinics. Uh, the, turned them into charter schools or uh, or uh, market rate apartments or condos. But what about but the system that charged somebody because and they put she them in said jail. that, listen, you're not going to inject me and she's fighting back. She's You don't have the right to do that. No, to you don't. But you know what? It's interesting. I mean, we, we blame John Engler and he certainly gets some blame, but we've had Democratic, like we've had Democratic exactly. administration since. We currently have one. They need to address that instead of just worrying about looking like they, they're being so successful with a surplus in the budget. We need to, you know, we keep talking about mental health, about guns, and, you know, the NRA will say it's a mental health issue. But, you know, the Republicans will say it's a mental health issue. It's not a gun issue. And yet they won't fund the mental health that, okay, that's listen, needed but it's for not that. Just but the Democrats health, are poverty, also. It's poverty as well. Well, you, it's, it's, it's always going to be, it's, it's always going to be positive. So it's a holistic that, approach to I, I, the whole thing. Exactly. Right? exactly. And, exactly. And, and if you go to, if you go to some of these states, go to Denver. That's the capital, of Colorado. You see a homeless camp, a thousands of people. Go to Phoenix. It's criminal. You see, go to you LA. See, oh, Francisco. you see them all. It's you, criminal. But that, we can see money and, in other countries. Our, 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 our homeless things. rate here is way low. I, you know, I, I checked the other day. The homeless rate is any on any given night in the city of Detroit, one thousand two hundred eighty homeless. You would think it'd be more, but you know what? Detroit is a lousy place to be homeless. I mean, if you're going to be homeless, you go to Portland, Oregon. You go to L.A. You go to you go, Vancouver. You go to places where yeah. you can sleep out on the street right. at night and not freeze to death. But 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 in Phoenix, uh, one hundred and twenty degrees, uh, two hundred people and die uh, uh, from the heat? Yeah. No. Uh, That's outrageous. I'm right. sorry. Okay, yeah. well, Alan. I've got a couple here. One is uh, yesterday, Chief Craig, former Chief James Craig, uh, posted a column on the Daily Caller, which is a very conservative uh, publication, just gushing about why President Trump, ex-President Trump, should be the president again. And I'll just read you a little. It goes, under President Donald J. Trump, the economy was stronger and the streets were safer. In fact, the world was safer while America's southern border was being strengthened and American energy was being celebrated and utilized. It was a proud time to be an American. And he goes on and he goes on to say Americans need to accept that problems are building up while Washington leaders are unready to confront them. Unlike President Trump, obviously. He's got his nose so far up Trump's ass because he's worried about he's got to be running for the U.S. Senate so and he I, doesn't want Trump coming after so him. So that, that is exactly what I was saying. What office is he running for? He's running for the Senate. He's running for the Senate. He has to be because I'm like, well, what is this? He, he's, a look, he's look, man, a the coward of the county is running for the Senate. He's the guy that uh ran from the he said it was a, a potential hijacker that was going to take his car and he got it, 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 didn't he, he said have he a, ran but i mean yeah he ran something like that happened to me so well but you are a civilian legit. you're a civilian <laughs> you're a citizen you it not carrying a gun this guy got a gun 
right? It don't matter. He got a gun. Huh. He he's been a cop for matter. thirty in thirty years. He he protecting the city. We there was a video where some cops, some guys were shooting, doing shooting on the street with uh, like an assault weapon, and the cops like kept kept going. They avoided it, right? You know, it's like I, I mean, why become it's, a cop? It's okay to it's though. okay to circle around maybe That's and figure out. That's different though. Yeah. You ride but then, in your but then, but then, but then, but then, I'm I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. if you I'm don't sorry. wear a uniform, that's just like I was in the military. <laughs> So you 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 in a battleground and you run, they shoot your ass. Your own your own people will shoot you. That, that, and, that, he's a coward. And I have one other quick one. Go ahead. I, I was watching Newsmax, which was to the right of Fox News. Why Media. are you watching that shit? Well, I just try to uh, keep you an eye. Do you exactly. watch it? Keep, and and so oh, no. and okay. so, anyways, they had a little uh, picture of Rudy Giuliani, and it said, "Help the Rudy uh, Legal Fund." They're, they're, they're shilling for Rudy Giuliani and they're trying to help him get money for his legal fund. So I found a picture from uh, the movie Borat where Rudy was in there, if you remember. Okay. And so I, I want for Newsmax, if they would like to use the ad that I created here. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Give to the Rudy fund. One, eight hundred, really? All right. Anyways, okay. that's my. Wow. Okay. Now my rage. <laughs> Listen, I get a letter from uh, 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 somebody, uh, Kevin Adele's uh, mouthpiece. Didn't even spell my name right. The, the, <laughs> that bastard over at 910 want to shut me up, uh, threaten to sue me. Sue me, Kevin Adele. You, you a piece of garbage. You a liar. You a cheat. You're a racist. And, and, and you can dish it out, but he can't take it. What the, what, Alan? What do they, what do they call the uh the You can dish it out, but you got so that you can't take it no more. He listen, what do they call the Jews that uh collaborated Capos. with him? He, Yeah, he's a capo. You know, he'll sell his own family down the river. Now he's on turn he said this was an urban station, if number one in the country. Now it's Sean Hannessy, Gwen Beck. He got all the conspiracy well, what you mad about? I'm not mad. We, okay. we left. I'm, I'm not mad. I'm mad because he think he can intimidate me. Listen, I think you, you can't intimidate me sending me a letter. Tell your attorney that he needs to spell my name right. <laughs> Two, <laughs> to, to email me. That and I'm gonna get scared. Ooh. <laughs> so Mr. Adele. Please, Mr. Adele. There's him falling if, right there. If, right. if, 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 if you want to fuck Hello? with me, do it right. Because you, you and your station, y'all ain't shit. That's my outrage of the week. Well, you All know, right. well, you know something. Before we you... go, before we go okay. on, let's let's take a break. Let's take, and, and then we'll come back and continue the conversation. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree. We are living through unprecedented times. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. Residents may apply for up to $25,000 to help cover 2019, 2020, and 2021 tax years. Previous year's taxes must be paid in full or in a payment agreement with the treasurer's office. Eligible homeowners must have a qualified financial hardship that occurred on or after January 21st, 2020. You must currently own and occupy your home as your primary residence and must have owned it since January 21st, 2020. To see if you qualify, please visit waynemetro.org, call 313-388-9799 or email textinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Okay. That. One, you should, you know what? Obviously, he's watching you, uh, watching this show on YouTube because why would he have his attorney send a letter to you? So, obviously, he's watching. He's watching the same person that, you know, was on his channel that he said, you know, listen, nobody was listening, but you're watching Detroit in black and white. That's one thing. The other thing is, there seems to be a whole lot of conversation about. Um, urban talk radio and the non-existence of the right. urban talk radio and people seem to be very uh, outraged about it 
listen, my take on that is this. Number one, for those of us that was on um, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, listen, it's not as if we, we were willing participants, the bottom line. Yeah. Nobody's a victim, okay? Willing participants. Two, when you own something, you get to do what the heck you want to do with it. And that's what he's doing. So for all those people and, who has a problem with it, listen, if you But when he dish it out, have, Vanessa, huh? he should be able to take it. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree. Care. I disagree. I don't disagree with you. But if, you. But, but if he, if he want to uh, come at me and, and beat up on me, fine. But then I can come back and kick him in his, in his is, little nut ball head. You got your head. own platform. Right. You could say, say what you want to say. Right. No but question. what I'm saying is, I'm talking about the broader Oh, I'm not, I'm not he, upset. You know, That's him. Yeah, he absolutely. owns it. He and, owns and, it. And, he could do what the heck he wants and, to do and, with and it. And no question about it. Enough of what Kevin Adele, because we got bigger fish to fry. Thanks for listen watching, to, though. Listen. Bring your, your, your viewers over here to Detroit Black listen, and White Cat. De Detroit is, uh, right now, we, we had some folks that go to, uh, first they went to uh, circuit court about suing the redistrict uh, right. a commit commission. The uh, circuit court say you got no suit. The Supreme Court, the Michigan Supreme Court say you don't have a suit. Federal court say bullshit. Right. You can yeah. listen. It's, it, it, Detroit, Detroit has been hoodwinked. The Democratic Party pissed on the city of Detroit to get control of Lansing. So, in other words, they diluted all the voting uh, power of Detroit. Now we rep the parts of Detroit is represented by people from Royal Oak and beyond Wall Lake and Hazel Park and all this, these other places. Not even counting the people that are moved into Detroit, like Steve Tabachman, Rashida Tlaib, Shree Canada. All these people came from nowhere, and they went and they and they bought their way into the community. And here they are, represent us. And now these folks are crying. Where the fuck were you when they was doing all this? You didn't get the people out to vote. You diluted the race. You had 10 people run for one office and stuff. So I'm not surprised that Detroit has been rendered useless. And, and they're not a major player. Nobody has to come in here and beg for a vote. They don't have to uh, give any preachers any money. They already have sold their soul. So, you know, I hope the lawsuit... Uh, I hope they win. These, hope they the, prevail. Uh, yes, I, I sure do. And then they have to re restructure what they uh, screwed up on. So th that's yep. what's happening. Let's go to our uh, All right, our let's guests. bring her in here. Okay. Do we have her? Yeah, there we go. Let me, okay. Hi there. Yes, we got it. And, and Miss Aaliyah Harvey Quinn, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are y'all? Uh, thank you. We were just running and, 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 and uh, you know, we're doing our usual thing. But go ahead. Thank All you. right. We're just going to give you a little intro. Uh, you've got quite a uh, impressive little uh, bio here. It says, Aaliyah Harvey Quinn is a bold leader with the dedication for investing in often ignored emerging grassroots leaders as a daughter of Black Panthers. Aliyah's calling into the world of activism, leadership, and community building it was always in her DNA. She is the founder and executive director of Force Detroit. Under her leadership, Force Detroit has established itself as a widely recognized and well-respected community organization, shedding light locally and nationwide on the solutions to gun violence with a primary focus on community violence intervention. Well, that's uh, quite impressive. Tell us, what, what do your organization do? Yeah, so we do community organizing um, to change policies, and then we do actual community programming towards building a freer and safer Detroit. We're one of the Shot Stoppers groups with the city of Detroit. Yeah. You're one of the West Shot Stoppers group? No, we're one of the six Shot Stoppers groups okay. with the city. Yes, ma'am. So, so uh, have you been working with the city? Um, yes, we have. We've been at the gun violence task force. We're now a shot stoppers group. Um, excited about like what's emerging, but it's only been you know two months. We're only two months into the process. Okay, so what is emerging? 
Yeah. So what what's emerging is well, well, maybe I should start with what we advocated for. Okay. In um, January of 2020, we released a report where we um, asked for 150 million dollars over 10 years to invest in what essentially is a parallel safety sector to the police. Um, so that people have an opportunity before they're arrested to transform their lives. And that's because we know all of the things that you were saying early, right earlier, we know people are poor, they're um, low social determinant of health scores, people don't see the opportunities even if they're present. And so CBI sites function as a way to help people to really um, across the country uh, get the mental health that they need, like you all mentioned earlier, get the job assistance that they need, get access to, you know, basic services. But it's, pay it's filtered through this sort of lens of focusing on the people who are directly impacted by violence, who are at the center of violence, so that we mitigate the traumas that that group of people are dealing with. And statistically, that's been proven to reliably reduce violence between 20 and 40 percent. So if you look at models like Cure Violence or Advance Peace across the country, these models have been able to uh, reduce violence when properly implemented, you know, at a staggering rate. Sometimes, you know, even more than that, like ceasefire in, o in Oakland was able to reduce violence by 51 percent advanced peace in Richmond, California, was able to reduce it by almost 70%. How do we stop these kids from getting guns and, and shooting themselves or shooting their siblings? You know, it's just, yeah. you know, you read here in Detroit, we, we got a rash of them, but then it's all around the country. Now, how do we, Yeah. if I own a gun, how do I keep it safe? Yeah, so I mean, I think we gotta secure our guns. Um, Sometimes I mean, they go and they go into these and they get them, even yeah. when parents say I had it locked up, but they went and got the gun anyway. Yeah, I mean, so violence is a public health epidemic, and we just don't have the resources that we should in the space. Every other meaningful public health epidemic is met with a real strong narrative push. Like, remember, um, this is your brain on drugs and all that messaging around, like, not doing drugs in the early 90s or even the, the messaging around COVID more recently. We don't see the same type of investment around awareness about gun violence, how to properly store, what that looks like, or even, you know, there should be ads <laughs> popping up on these games that these children are playing that functions in much the same way that those ads did when I was a child in the 90s. I was scared to death of drugs. And did you grow up in Detroit? I grew up um, mostly in Detroit, but I started, I went through elementary school in Ecorse. And, you know, we see every, I mean, you know, every weekend you're here in Chicago, there's 50 shootings here in Detroit. There's a bunch of shootings and it doesn't seem to reach the crisis uh, where, it should be a crisis like every weekend we should be alarmed, but it's just another weekend comes and goes. Uh, how do we get people to in, in everywhere to be outraged? It, it, you know, we're, we, we're, we're becoming numb with the mass shootings and, you know, in supermarkets and schools and all that. And we've been numb in the uh, shootings in the inner city forever. How do we, how do we get people to, yeah. So when you look at the movements that have been successful around the country, like the Boston Miracle, um, there was the direct, you know, CBI work, which wasn't called CBI work at the time, but it still retains many of the same elements. Um, but then there was also a piece around culture change. And a lot of times that piece is led by our faith community. It is, you know, um, Bishop Daryl Harris, um, shout out to him. He rocks with Ceasefire. Um, it is that team showing up, praying with families. Um, it is uh, those like faith-based groups doing marches. Um, 
they've been doing marches in Detroit. There's a, a team of pastors um, led by a Kojic brother. His name escaped me. We were partnering in uh, 2021, but they, they've been leading marches across the city for, for years. Um, and, and the thing is, is that you have to start with a really, really intentional investment in a neighborhood. The relationships have to be real and the support has to be real for community. Because our community is used to looking at the nonprofit community like the nonprofit community is trying to steal from them, right? And so they have to, to people have to be able to see the tangible material change in their lives in order to begin to trust and to begin to have hope because at every point, systems have harmed our community, even if they're well-intended, right? So like we see uh, schools uh, functioning as a pipeline to prison, right? And, and so when you show up as a nonprofit, unfortunately, that's a part of another system. And our people, we have to build those one-on-one -on -one individual relationships through good community organizing um, for people to even have hope in um, a safer... It, it, it seems in the schools, like it, you know, Adolf and I went to school together, we, we knew like in sixth grade, seventh grade, some kids were not gonna, they were gonna go to prison. Uh, you know, and, and it seems like if we as kids can figure that out, why are the school districts not doing more to intervene and say, this kid is headed in the wrong direction. Let's get him now before he ends up where we fear he might or they, they kick him out all the time, you know, unless instead of, you know, dealing with the problem. But I do have a question, and then I'll go, and I'll go to you, uh, Vanessa. Uh, in Baltimore, they they took a housing project and they had the nature of Islam to come in there and patrol it and and they stopped all the crime but guess what uh folks in congress said well we're gonna cut that money off because they didn't like uh farrakhan and and, and his politics and so mm -hmm. they withdrew the funds and it we right back to uh scaring the hell out of folks who were scared to come home lock their doors because crime went up how do we get past the, the politics of all this and say, okay, this group, yeah. this group is good. I might not like some of the things they talk about, but they have come into our community and have made it safe. Yeah. So that's the, that's the challenge. And that's why we organize at the same time as we do the actual safety programming. Um, the organizing has to be real. It has to be long-term. The relationships have to be deep. It can't just be about politics. And then if you do that intentional deep dive in community, if this program is truly working and the people truly care about what's happening, then they they vote them out, period. Like if you, you came and shut down this thing that's helping me and my son, they vote them out. But you can't do it in isolate. It can't just be a program at a, you know, at a storefront nonprofit that's isolated from community. We have to be like in people's face, talking to them, interacting with them, having lunch with them. We got to be taking a meaningful approach to, to the work. So with your approach, because you've talked about all these other programs and they're effective for a minute, but it always, it appears to me that it's a band-aid. It's effective for a minute. It's not long-term. What are some of the tools that your organization is using or plan to use so that this will have a long, long-term impact yeah. in the community? Yeah, so um, we advocated for a Michigan Office of Community Violence Intervention. That was a recent win politically at the state level. Mm -hmm. The goal was to secure, um, has been to secure dedicated public offices that you know, write federal grants and, and steer public dollars into this sector. We're advocating for the same thing at the city level. Um, we are working with philanthropy to advocate for long-term um, private sector allocations for this funding. And at the same time, we are um, offering support and training to our peers who uh, are in the CVI sector, and we always have, we've always regranted to other groups. 
How, how do people get involved in your organization? How do they contact you? Right. Yeah, so um, we've got an organizing team. Folks can reach out to um, Lynn Wiggins, and that's uh, Lynn, L-Y-N-N, at ForceDetroit.org. They can also reach out to Skrill, S-C-R-E-A-L, at ForceDetroit.org. I would give folks phone numbers out, but I don't want to make the mistake of giving out um, – People's personal numbers on here. Because <laughs> you know people. Is, is know that, people yeah. be calling. Is that correct, Lynn at ForceDetroit.org? That's that correct. That? Yes, sir. Bless it. All right. We got. We're gonna have to have you back on, uh, Miss Gwen. You know. Uh, I'm looking so, forward. Listen, we need uh, organizations like yours, and and with Lynn uh, uh, that uh, was talking about uh, working with your organization, I said we gotta have her on. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for inviting me. This has been a good conversation. I'm gonna um, start tuning in. I didn't know about the show. Right. Well, yeah. well, thank you. Right. How we can we be reached? I want you to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share. Yes, ma'am. Right. Tell, well, me, your, tell right. me your right. names. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, a, I'm Alan Lingle, Adolf Mongo, and Vanessa Moss. Yes. Uh, we, nice we, to meet people you all. can listen to us on. Uh, we're live on Facebook on, on Deadline Detroit and uh, Detroit in Black and White. We have a, a website where you can see all of the shows, previous and current, on DetroitinBlackandWhite.com. And uh, we're also on Twitter and uh, and YouTube as well. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah thank well, you. Thanks, thanks so uh, much. Uh, uh, Aaliyah Harvey Quinn. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for having me. Y'all take you. care. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be back. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree. We are living through unprecedented times. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. Residents may apply for up to $25,000 to help cover 2019, 2020, and 2021 tax years. Previous year's taxes must be paid in full or in a payment agreement with the treasurer's office. Eligible homeowners must have a qualified financial hardship that occurred on or after January 21st, 2020. You must currently own and occupy your home as your primary residence and must have owned it since January 21st, 2020. To see if you qualify, please visit waynemetro.org, call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Well, welcome back. Joining us is our, our regular contributor, Jim Nardoni from Down River. Good morning. What's up, Jim? Listen, uh, you know, you spent, what, 28 years as a, a police officer? I did. I, I just can't get over this uh, news story coming out of Ohio where uh two cops responded no they were already there uh, and they got a call saying that a, a, a woman uh, stole a bottle of liquor out of the store and she got in her car she was uh, obviously pregnant six seven months uh, uh pregnant i don't know how many months but you, you can see on the body cam where the one car, uh, cop just shot through the window killed her and her unborn child Tell me, over a, a bottle of liquor? Well, I'm going to start with this. I just read a little article about John Belford is the police chief, a, a gutless punk of a police chief that I'm shocked by his response. His response was that his officers were victims in this incident. A gutless, cowardly police chief. First of all, he said we should stop and see what happened, right? Let's, let's wait and see what, what actually happened. And then he came out and put a press release out that said that his police officers were victims of an assault. Well, if you saw that video, they weren't victims of anything, right? They changed the laws in California. People are, are fired up about it. We can't let people do whatever they want. People have property. They own a business. They shouldn't have to get their things stolen. But to kill somebody for a bottle of liquor or, or, a, or a tube of toothpaste? Like somebody was somebody's right it was her two. and the baby right two people yes two people. the baby was killed and also. so the question for me becomes 
how do we police the police? Uh, this is the answer. <laughs> it takes courage. And and I can tell you this, I, my, my first reaction, I was a police chief, was right. to protect the police officers because they have a tough, right. very difficult job. That police officer needed to take two steps. One, one step to his right with his right foot and one step to the right with his left foot, and he's no longer in danger, right? So this, this was a little, a little girl, a girl, 21 years, yeah. no disrespect, but right. that's a young lady, right? right. right? 21 right. years old. Right. And the, your, the shoot first and ask questions later, it's, it's an outrage. And I, it always starts at the yeah. top in a police organization. Absolutely. If you don't hold your people accountable, holding them accountable is saying, you know, this doesn't look good. Let's see what really happened. Was the police officer in danger? Was his life in danger? That's the only reason there's a force continuum. And if his life was in danger, he had the right to, to shoot. Other than that. Well, what was the what was the empathy and compassion for the person who lost her life as well as her child's life for the family? To me, you should have addressed the public. This is a tr tragedy. This is terrible what happened we're doing our investigation i can't talk about it talk about it because it, we're still investigating that's it but to go and say they were assaulted and doing all that that's ridiculous if you he saw needs to, if he you needs saw to go. if you he saw needs to go. they need to go if you they saw it step aside. If, if you saw it if you saw the body camera uh the the, the, the video you would say why did he shoot well, I mean, he just pulled his gun out and shot through the window. I've Isn't had it? incidences like that where, where an officer was in, his life was in danger. Someone still, they, they put the residents of that shopping mall in danger by shooting her because the car went off in a different direction. So if, if you thought you were in fear of your life, what you did is you sent a car through a parking lot with nobody driving it. Dylan Roof killed nine people in a church, and they took him to McDonald's. <laughs> and, and he, he, he's a. I, I, I wonder all these people that um, um, mass killers, etc. And, and, and uh, unless they kill themselves, they take them into custody. But to kill a a a, a woman over a bottle of liquor, that's why they tell employees do not chase somebody out of the store. That's still in a, a, a coat or a pair of pants or a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. A bottle of liquor the costs store thirty dollars or fifty dollars. But okay. I, so you took someone's life for that when you had no other option. That's going to be the argument. That's going to be the police officer's argument. His life was in in jeopardy, and he had to fire to protect his own life. Well, we who gonna, believes that? Well, we're gonna we're gonna continue to, to, to follow this, and you it's, know, it's the chief. The chief is, 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 they're following the lead of their chief. Their chief is saying, oh, you're a victim. You're a victim. You're standing there with a gun against a 21-year-old pregnant lady who's perhaps allegedly stole something that cost right. $25 or $30. Right. In what world does it make sense to take that life? Right. Well, but, but, but we hear it all the time, Jim, that uh, I, I, the officer, they, 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 you know, I did for my life. So I just shoot now and, and and talk later. You know, it's like, God, I, I, I'm seeing these videos. There was a, a cop. He had a dog. I think of you, Jim, when you, you talk about the cops with the dogs. And the dog bit the cop. Did he? Yeah. No, like, he was so busy trying to beat up whoever he was chasing that and he brought the dog and the dog bit him. <laughs> Let me ask you guys, since we're talking about officers and chief, chiefs of police departments, what's your take on the, the, the uh, chief in, in, in Dearborn driving drunk? The fire chief. So that's an interesting story, actually. Yeah. Should they fire him? They will not fire him. Uh, so they, he they said, won't fire they, a police He said, officer. should they fire him? No, they, they no, not. because Why not? he'll probably be suspended for 30 days. The rule of thumb with police officers who un were arrested for drunk driving is about a 30 day suspension. So I expect he'll get 30 days. It's a bad look for the, for the, this guy's a shouldn't he, shouldn't he get demoted though? Yes. He should okay. have never been a police chief oh, okay. of, of Dearborn. If there's somebody else okay. that should have been a police chief okay. of Dearborn okay. when he was appointed, he has a PhD. 
most poli- uh, I'm sorry, fire chief. We're talking about right. firefighters, not right. police officers. Right. Let's make and that I, clear. I misspoke. Firefighters, uh, they, they take a different route. They don't, a lot of them aren't as educated as the police officers. Uh, to be a police chief, you mostly have to have about a master's or uh, at a minimum, mm-hmm. a four year degree, a bachelor's degree. Fire chiefs take a different route because they're paramedics and they do. But this guy had a PhD, very qualified educational wise. But as far as uh, being the fire chief, I think they had a better choice. And he wasn't really, I, he moved up the food chain pretty quick. He did. You know, so he knew, I mean, he he had friends in high places. Well, the interesting part about that is the, the and gentleman. He had that, indulged quite a bit. I know very well the gentleman <laughs> that should have been the chief. Of, mm-hmm. the, of is the he still there? Department. No, he's the uh I hired him as a fire chief in the city of Trenton. So oh. he is now the city administrator for the city of Trenton. <laughs> so I know I know so a little bit you, about the situation. So you, so you stole right. him. <laughs> no, he was he had left. He retired. <laughs> and, uh, he well, left. and thank you, Jim. We're gonna take a break and uh we'll continue the conversation. Detroit in black and white. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. Residents may apply for up to $25,000 to help cover $2,000. Whoops. Shit. Whoops. Okay, Alan. All right, I hit (laughs) Okay, you know, Alan, Alan. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's do that again. Do we want to run that? Yeah, we'll run it. Run it. it. All right, let's do it. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. Residents may apply for up to $25,000 to help cover 2019, 2020, and 2021 tax years. Previous year's taxes must be paid in full or in a payment agreement with the treasurer's office. Eligible homeowners must have a qualified financial hardship that occurred on or after January 21st, 2020. You must currently own and occupy your home as your primary residence and must have owned it since January 21st, 2020. To see if you qualify, please visit waynemetro.org, call 313-388-9799 or email textinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. But hey, you know, welcome back. I made off my little bit of Moss and Alan Lango. We was, uh, during the break, during the break, I, I was saying that uh, I agree with the, uh, the crazy woman from uh, Georgia, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who said that Diane Feinstein and Mitch McConnell need right. to go. And we've got and the I, video. Okay, and I agree with uh, Nikki Haley, who says that the Senate is that's a uh, <laughs> it's a nursing home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. What are my thoughts about what running for re-election in twenty oh. twenty six? That's a. Did you hear the question, Senator, running for re-election in 2026? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Listen, that's sad because it really when, is when, sad. My, when my father turned 82, yeah. we had to take the keys from him. He went out and bought a new car. Yeah. He, he was, his eyesight was going bad. My mother said, who would sell an 82 year old man who can't see a car? <laughs> the same people that sold him the cars years before, you know, yeah. and had to take the keys. And you you hate that because he taught me how to drive, taught everybody how to drive. He could drive. But it gets to a point where enough is enough. Mitch McConnell needs to say. Yeah, it looks five. like he, I, I think he had a mini stroke, which, which you, you bounce back. And that's why they say, oh, he's fine. Because people who have many strokes continue yeah. on. You know. I'm not going to speculate, but what I will say is this. You know, for years and years, we've had her conversations about term limits. This is an example. You have people who are yeah. in these, hold these positions, and they hold them until they pass away. 
And that is really unfortunate. You have people, you know, the, the Supreme Court, that's what happened. Right. Listen, I think there should be term limits. You should not be so ego driven that you say, hey, I'm going to stay here until literally everything falls off. That's unfair. We, we, that's you know unfair what? to we the have, country. Have, that is unfair time. to the yeah. country. That is unfair to the country. We, it's we've, unfair to the people that you serve. We've had federal judges like when I come uh, to right, the courthouse. We're, we're in their 90s. Yes. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's great. I mean, some of them had still very sharp minds and stuff like that, but they were. But a little, you remember, they had remember hard Strong hearing, Thurman? So. He was a hundred years old. Yeah. He was on his deathbed. They needed him to mm. vote. They was bringing him in on a gurney. Right. He he. All he did, they laugh, they but... took him in and he he <laughs> voted. I don't think he and knew you know, where he, he was. Know what he's I, doing. I, you know, he I, didn't I, know what he was doing. And so, for me, it's it's you know. You're standing there, and, and, and you know people are joking. I think it's really sad, but yeah, it's more of a commentary you know, about uh, you know why he won't and quit. What you are and yeah, why about Joe quit. Biden? Because the governor, because the governor of, of, of term limits wait a for that. The governor of Kentucky is a Democrat, so if McConnell stepped down mm -hmm. or uh, unfortunately died, he'll appoint a Democrat. That's what they worried about. You know, and you know, uh, so, well, and, and well, what and, is he worried about? You know what? You say they, you're talking about him because to me, yeah. that's ego. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. During, during the yeah. White House yeah. correspondence dinner recently, I think it was back in May or so, uh, Roy Wood Jr., uh, the comedian, mm -hmm. was saying, he goes, he goes, isn't it crazy? He goes, in France, they're going crazy because they want to move the retirement age from 62 to 64. And he says, here we got an 80 year old guy who wants four more years of work. Uh, he doesn't want to retire. And, you know, the question becomes, I mean, obviously, like Joe Biden, again, age is a question of people say it's when ageism. You heard, you heard what he said. Uh, he said he was a 21-year-old convincing uh, segregation uh, in this, like, uh, strong Thurman to vote for the, uh, the Voting Rights Act. You got to be at least 33 to yeah. be in the Senate. So he, so, you know, he, listen, I'm forgetful. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not 80 exactly, years old. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Grandpa is old. Grandpa is old. So what do you that, think? I, well, I think we got no choice because we got a maniac who, <laughs> if he get elected, he never leaves I disagree. You, we always have options. You just don't what, like what, the what, options that the you option? have. What's the option? You don't like it. No, you say we don't have a choice. You just don't like the choices, but you do have choices. So who can replace grandma, a uh, grandpa on the on the Democratic Nobody's side? Nobody's going to do that. They're going to yeah. let him. They're, they're talking about Newsom in California. For this guy for, until but he finishes his, his term, they, they, however it goes. They've mentioned Newsom in California, but I don't it's think not he's, happen. He's, he's too far. We so, got yeah. one that cheats in Lansing. Her name is Big Gretch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, people, but she's not going to, she wouldn't, she, she I don't wouldn't believe step she would, in she would not minute. step in because that's not how it goes. That's not the pecking order. Uh, I, I do have if we want a little humor. We got here. Robert Kennedy. We got, oh my gosh. We got, <laughs> why uh, was that, oh my gosh? Because he's, he's a not nut job. Happen, he's a yeah. nut job. <laughs> Stop calling people names. You're going to get a letter uh, in the mail. Uh -oh. <laughs> you're going to get a letter. Uh -oh. <laughs> Spell my name. It's not a b o l l. You're going to get a letter in the mail or an email. Don't say that about Robert Kennedy. Uh, uh, well, well here's, here's a little funny thing on uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. A little, little humor here that I found. We looked up some words that have been said about you. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Q clown. Looney tune. Unhinged. Moron. I, I've got a few more. Osama bin Karen. A dipstick. A dingbat. Adult. A dullard. A dimwit. A doofus. A dummy. Dumbass. Uh, I'm only a third of the way through the D's. Looks like the average troll in my Twitter feed. A good argument for misogyny. Uh, Nazi wine mom. Nazi cave woman. Just Nazi. Oh, I don't let name calling bother me or offend me. I just don't. Butter brain. This one's from someone across the pond, a daft wanker. That's British for stupid. <laughs> it's a divided world out here. You know, it's so funny when you watch the different cable stations. I said it's MSNBC, CNN, 
they're talking about Trump, Trump, uh, Trump, like prosecution of Trump. You go over to like Fox, Newsmax, it is Biden, Biden, Hunter Biden, the emails from uh, Biden uh, under the pseudonyms and, and this and that endlessly. And so it's it's funny. It's I can't like, stand the I can't stand uh, that or that. Right. I'm going to tell it's you, because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's extreme on both sides. But anyway, as we come to an end, uh, Alan, uh, your final thought. I'm going to say, hey, there's a lot happening this weekend. we got the That's Jazz right. Fest, yeah. which I think is always an amazing festival. The Royal Oak Taste. Or whatever our speech they stole yeah. I'm I'm not, I'm not, yeah i'm mad that they left Pontiac. they do nothing for the city of royal oak for the commerce there probably maybe the city of royal oak must get some money for it but they do nothing all most of the stores have to shut down in pontiac it would be great because there aren't but a they, lot took of the it. they took it they took it away they took it so i'm not a huge advocate although so there's a lot of people who love it there's a lot of great music going on there and then we have in hamtramck the whole Weekend festival Labor Day, but you wouldn't even. Uh, and there's a Labor you Day even parade. Know that. You wouldn't even know that if you watch uh, a, a couple of the local channels. They promoted uh, uh, Art Beats and yeah, Eats like yes. they never. They they barely mentioned the jazz festival. Right. Never said uh, anything festival, about right. about Hamtramck. Has a great thing going all weekend in Hamtramck. Uh, you want to fly some flags? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It's the pride flag. Yeah. But but also uh, there is a Labor Day parade. I think it's the first time since the pandemic they're going to have it down here. I think it's going to start on Michigan Avenue. Uh, and it's going to be, usually you can feel the energy if it's an election year, which it's not quite. And But also the UAW is talking about right. striking. So you'll right. see a lot of UAW yeah, see, members right. at right. the parade. So, and your final um, thought. Let me say that I, I, uh, Alan stole my thunder because I usually uh -oh. like to talk about what's going on the weekend. I will say last night I was out. I walked over to um, Copenhagen Young um, Municipal Complex outside there dancing in the D. It was it was lit last night. I had a good time. Were you lit? Uh. In spirit, yes. But I, I wasn't <laughs> what kind drinking. Of spirit, no, water. W a t e r. <laughs> And if I had H2O. decided to have a drink, I was good because I walked. So, okay. but um, I'd say yeah. I, if I know man more than one drink, I Uber or something, or I don't, I don't drive. I, I saw Langford one time in an Uber. I said he must be <laughs> inebriated. No, no, I just I don't take a chance. I've never had a DUI, and I I hope to never have one. Okay. But, you know, okay. Okay. So, but what I'd like to say is that if you're watching our show. We want you to like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. Detroit in black and white. You can see us on all platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go to our page, DetroitBlackAndWhite.com. Like, subscribe, and share. Have a wonderful, safe holiday weekend. It's going to be scorching hot. We're going to have some wonderful weather. Enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to another spirited conversation next Saturday here at McShane's on the corner of Michigan and Trumbull. And I want to thank Bob Roberts for letting us use his establishment. And thanks, and, and, and thanks uh, uh, Aaliyah Harvey Quinn from Force Detroit. You know what? We got to have her back on. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, Teresa Henry. Uh, yes. uh, this is Adolph Mongo, Alan Langle, and Vanessa Moss. We'll be back next week. All righty. You know, and we'll see how perfect can we uh, get. Get it. Next week. We'll get, we'll it right. get it right. We won't be on mute next week. <laughs> get like it right. Mute R. Kelly. Mute right. Detroit in black and white. <laughs>